Hello everybody, Rope Fox here, and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock. This is episode 22, and man, it is good to finally be back on the realm to do some recording, because last week I didn't have a video at all, at least for Truly Bedrock. My tutorial did come out, part one of the XP Furnace Array, if you didn't check that out. The card will be popping up in the top right corner, but other than that, no videos came out for Truly Bedrock, and that is because I have just been super busy in my personal life trying to get some things done, but that didn't stop me from doing some work around here. In the last episode, if you remember, because it has been about two weeks now, we finished working on this XP furnace with the smoker. So we finished this module, and this was blank, and in between episodes, I went ahead and placed in the second one. This one is cooking, and I don't know how much it actually has left. I can't really collect from it at the moment. No, definitely can't collect from it. But for this one, we are going to collect XP, and I believe I did three or four rounds of smelting or cooking so that should be a decent amount of xp and then i also started decorating around the area i decided to go with brick for the walls and then i started making some support beams for the inside of the vault so like i said even though i didn't have any episodes coming out i have been doing some work and then if we take a look in the sewer i actually brought the wall all the way down and just like i said just trying to get some work done even though nothing had came out. And for today, what I'm thinking is I need a different source of food. The cows, uh, it does require a bit of my attention, and we're also trying to sell the cooked steaks. But what I'm thinking is we need some sort of AFK food source. And the best AFK food source, at least the next best one that I can think of, is an automatic chicken farm. And that is going to go right here. Before we begin work on the chicken farm, I do want to collect the XP. Like I said, I went through three or four rounds. So that is about 44, 33 to 44 stacks of kelp that I cooked. And I went ahead and removed all my armor and everything else that I had mending on it just to be on the safe side. And what I wanted to do was try to repair my soak touch pickaxe because in the last episode I was worried about that breaking when I was removing the glass. So let's go ahead and see what we have. So we pull out the stack, and that was actually a decent amount. So like I said, that's three or four rounds that I did, and that took me to, looks like a little over half, and that is, that's not too bad at all. I do need iron once again. All the iron that we bought from Prowl is all gone. So instead of grinding, because like I said, I've been very busy, I put up a request over at the Freelancer Guild, which is right here. Now, for those of you who haven't seen this, the Freelancer Guild is something, uh, I don't know if it was Loy or who came up with it, but basically it's a place where we can post jobs or requests and, of course, offer payment in exchange. For example, Silent has gather 64 gas tiers and he'll pay 64 pebbles and then 64 poison potatoes for 16 pebbles. So I decided to make use of this and I requested... 64 iron blocks, but I didn't know what that would be worth. So I just said pay could be negotiated and Zap has come through once again. For those of you who don't remember, Zap hooked it up with a bunch of birch wood earlier on in the season when we were making the shop or trying to supply our shop. So again, thank you Zap for that and thank you for giving us these iron blocks. So they are right here. Perfect. Now as far as payment goes, he says hit me up. We were talking about it, and apparently he is good on everything at the moment, he said. So I guess we don't have anything that we could actually give him. Uh, I'm sure we'll find out something, or we'll work out something that he needs. But at the moment, he said he's good. So once again, thank you, Zap. I really appreciate it. And I still want to head over to the shopping area and see if Zloy has restocked. And apparently... Apparently, Daphne also sells iron at her shop, and I had no idea because when I was asking for iron on the Discord, Zap, uh, of course, got to me about it. Zoe let me know he restocked the shop, and then Daphne said she also sold iron. And like I said, I had, I had no idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the shopping area and see who has iron for sale. It looks like Zoe has stocked up. But again, we are paying pebbles, and 
if I remember last time, it was two pebbles for a diamond. So again, that would be two and a half diamonds for 32. Two and a half diamonds for 32. And let's go ahead. We're going to take a look at Daphne's shop. And I know she is part of the Diamond Alliance, which means we will be paying in diamonds, which I am all for it. So let's see if she does have any iron. Um, yeah, I remember that. I haven't been in her shop recently. Hay bales. 32. Okay, there we go. 32 iron ingots for two diamonds. So half a diamond cheaper. And she has quite a bit. So was it nine across, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen, nineteen. And that would be uh math. Uh 38 diamonds, right? Pretty sure. I think it's 38. Yeah, 19, 19 is 38. <laughs> Ah, uh, man, it's a little early right now when I'm recording, so I'm just still waking up. And, ooh. Okay, we will have to come back for redstone blocks also, because I know, I know I will be running out of that very soon. So, let's go ahead and get some diamonds and buy out all of Daphne's iron. There is the payment for all of the diamonds, or all of the iron, and, oh man, that is so painful, because I am now under... I'm now under a stack of diamonds, and speaking of, I wonder if we've made any profit over at the shop, and I guess it's not really a spoiler at this point, but I did say I was working on the shop off camera, and this is what I've done, I've pretty much expanded everything, the redstone is now all enclosed within the building, and then if we take a look inside, this is what it currently looks like, and of course I do need to rework some things in here. But this is all done, and apparently this pig has come to stay. That pig has been in here forever, and I guess it's not going anywhere. But that is done, and I do need to make a couple letters for that also. And I'm pretty sure at this point, you can guess what the name is going to be. I mean, it's kind of like playing Wheel of Fortune. You just got to guess the last two letters. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at our profits down below, if we do have any. And we do have six diamonds. That is better than nothing, I will say. So we did get six diamonds back. And once again, I am over a stack of diamonds, but just barely. So that is 64 and 2, and I'm pretty sure I don't have space for that. Of course, we are back inside the vault, and it's finally time to build that chicken farm. And this thing is going to be pretty compact. It is, I don't want to say it's a new design, because I feel like it's so simple that it... Surely it has had to be done at some point, but yeah, this is going to be a very, very compact design, so let's go ahead and get started, and I guess pretty much this is going to be a mini tutorial for you guys. To build this chicken farm, you are going to need a 3x4 area, and let's go ahead and take a look at our supplies. I'm just kidding. We are not doing that today. That is definitely the tutorial style, but this is, this is truly bedrock, so we are not going to be all formal and everything like that. So let's just go ahead and start building. So we're going to grab our hopper. We are going to run our hopper into the back of the barrel. This is going to be the collection, obviously, for the chicken and feathers. And then we place a slab up top. And let's grab some blocks. Block. Dispenser. Hopper running into the top of this dispenser. The chickens are going to go up top. And then let's go ahead and knock these out. We want a observer facing down. Redstone dust, and then comparator. I can, oh, there we go. Okay, and that is the redstone for it all done. Like I said, very, very simple, very compact. So this is what, a uh, one, two, three, four, four by one. If you want to get technical, or one by four, but then again, we do need to have the blocks around it to actually hold the chickens in, so I guess that would, I guess make it that three by three, or four by three, but all the rest on itself is one wide, which is very nice, and I got my glass, and I got my brick, I was almost going to say grass, I got my grass, <laughs> I got my glass, and let's go ahead and place that here, and we're not really going to see this. But again, it's just one of those things that I do with chicken farms, cow farms, and stuff like that. I use glass just so I can see everything going on inside. And we will need to probably put another block on top so they don't get out. 
And then I notice when you put slabs on top, they kind of just start bouncing up and down and then it gets really annoying. So we will make this two blocks high. And then as far as decorating goes, all we really have to do is, well, I'm going to plug this back up and probably give it some light so we don't have any spawns back here. The light, and we probably don't need it, but just to be safe. And then we build this up. Build that up. And then... Glass like this. There we go. That is pretty much done. And oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. Uh, now let's see. I forgot the lava. We need the lava blade. Silk touch. There you are. Silk touch. And it. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know where. Oh, there it is. Okay. I am all over the place today, so now I forgot what I'm doing. Lava, lava, okay, block, and we need glass because we're going to have to move very quickly. Ah! <laughs> Do not try that at home, everyone. Okay, that is done. So the chickens are going to be dispensed, and baby chickens will not be affected by this lava here. But as soon as they grow into adult chickens, they will automatically be burned. And then, of course, all of their drops are going to go down below into the barrel. Uh, hello? Can I help you two? The sun, the sun is going down. We are closed. We, you cannot come in. What, what do they even want in there? Are they just walking up to it because it's a door? I mean, both of them went up to the door. Is there something in here that you guys want? I can't even open the door. Thanks. I'm going to have to... I can't open the door. Uh, I'll take care of them later. But the reason why I came up top is because now we do need to add chickens to the chicken farm. And if you recall, we have this whole stash right there. So surely out of all these, we can get a few chickens. So let's go ahead and grab whatever we can. And then I'm just going to start chucking eggs into the chicken farm. And then whatever we get is what we get. Oh, we got one already. Oh, poor chicken. I hit it twice with, with eggs. <laughs> There's two. This is, we're off to a good start. One stack. And I'm hoping to get, oops, about 20. Four. 20 is a good number, I think. Five. Ugh, <laughs> poor chickens. I'm hitting them with eggs. Oh, I lost count now. Is that six? So that's actually, we've only gone through two stacks of eggs. And I'm going to go ahead, because if I keep talking, I'm going to lose count. I'm pretty sure that's seven. And hopefully, I'm going to have to go back and watch this clip. That's eight. And yeah, let me go ahead and finish throwing these eggs and get about 20 chickens in this build. Nine. I definitely, definitely lost count of how many chickens went in. I just, yeah, I know there's at least 20 in here. But they are in, so I guess that's... That's good. We have more than 20 chickens. I know, like I said, I know for sure there's at least 20 in here. And there's no way I'm just going to be able to... Uh, is this how you grow them up? With They are two blocks down. I don't think I'm going to be able to reach them. Now, unfortunately, I am going to have to wait for them to grow up. And can I, like, at least get these? Oh, I guess I can at least hit these ones in the corner. Oh, okay, that's what I didn't want to happen. So at least we got one chicken up in there. Uh... And then maybe we can just go over to this side. That way I can at least start getting some eggs. And nope, I just keep feeding just keep feeding the same one, it looks like. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm just gonna have to I'm just gonna have to be patient and wait. And while I'm waiting, I guess I can collect a little bit more XP. I'm pretty sure I ran this thing twice. I think. I know I ran it more than once, but let's go ahead and collect XP out of this. I'm pretty sure it's all done cooking. Perfect. So we're going to collect this and repair our Fortune 3. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I definitely had a few rounds go through that. And then, uh, let's see. Do I want to repair the rest of this or where's Silk Touch? Silk Touch is what we did last. Mm, I used this one more. Let's go ahead and just collect this. And that is pretty much repaired. Perfect. And then we can go ahead and start running these again. So we just press these. And these will get started. And again, for those of you who didn't see this, this is going to let 11 
and about 40 something items go in. 11 stacks and roughly 40 items. And is this getting backed up? Okay, I just want to make sure these aren't backing up. This one is kind of backing up. And again, the cool thing about this is how this is working. When I press the button, this dispenses an item that's right there holding down that pressure plate and that's going to go for five minutes until it despawns the same for the other side we can see the item floating right there that's going to despawn and then what i can do is press it again and i wonder if i can hook up some sort of indicator light because at this point we are we are beyond doing a one wide design because the way i had to do this and i really hope they fix this and i do need to make a bug report is with the barrel now in the zoom avoid challenge Redstone challenge uh, video for the XP farm or furnace XP farm. I had the button here and that allows us to pass a redstone signal through. But what happens is after you exit the world and come back in, for some reason redstone doesn't want to pass through the barrel anymore. It kind of treats it like a glass block or a transparent block where no redstone signal goes through and it pretty much breaks everything and I don't know why that happens. So again, it works. Redstone passes through when you initially do it, but if you leave the world to come back in, it doesn't work until you actually remove the barrel and put it back. And then it'll let redstone come through again, and I'm pretty sure that should not be happening. So, like I said, I do need to make a bug report on that. But all that to say is that is why the button is now off to the side instead of being a one-wide design. And where I was going with that is I wonder if I need to make some sort of indication lamp. To let me know that I can press the button again and I really don't need an indicator lamp to go down below whenever I place those into builds those are kind of like bells and whistles because I think I think they look really cool but I'm not gonna have that for here because I can look at the smoker and know that it's done so I went ahead and I pressed the button again and just like the XP furnace array that I released the part one and part two over the last couple of weeks we do have this barrel here which I really like because we have all of the items that are cooking here Items get stored here, items get stored here, like you see, and then we have this barrel that's going to hold on to the rest of the items, and that allows me to press this button a few times because, like I said, it releases about 11 stacks and roughly 40 items per item that goes up there to despawn, and that allows me to basically store a few rounds worth of items to cook in this whole system, and... Again, just rambling on, but man, I really, I really love these XP farm builds. Even with all of that rambling and stalling, <laughs> none of my baby chickens have seemed to grown up yet, and I don't know how long it takes them to do that, but there is nothing currently being produced, because if we don't have adult chickens, they're not going to lay eggs, and therefore this thing is not going to function. I think we have that one up there. And of course, we know that when we throw eggs, we're not always going to get a baby chicken out of it. That is not guaranteed. So we'll go ahead and leave that. We'll probably check on the results in the next episode because we are all out of time for today's episode. So again, we bought some iron. We added in the chicken farm. And because it is so compact, I wonder if I can add more modules of chicken farm just so we can have a little bit more food. But I'm not quite sure how that will do entity-wise because, like I said, we do have... A little over 20 chickens in there, and I don't know if that's going to affect anyone else's spawns. And there that goes. So an egg did go through. It dispensed, but of course no chicken came out of that egg. But you saw that in action. And then we did collect some XP, which pretty much repaired my Fortune 3 pickaxe and then half of my Silk Touch, which we did at the beginning of the episode. And I'll probably go ahead and fix the rest of that up, as well as some of my other tools. Because, yeah, everything is pretty much broken. Even my elytra, surprisingly, is pretty much broken. But I do have some phantom membranes that I could use on that. But if I don't have to use them, then, you know, why use them? Again, rambling on. Just rambling on. A lot of rambling today. <laughs> so with that being said, everyone, this is the end of today's episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Rogue Fox, and I will see you later.